tech tip is going to be just some basic information on converting an 8083. We're going to do another one of these that talks about doing a higher power conversion, but for now we're just going to go over the basics of doing a simple conversion. And to do that, I've laid out three different heads here, and I've got pistons for them. Because it's very, very helpful to understand how a, a conversion is done, to understand the differences between the heads and the pistons. Okay, so this head, if you want to zoom in here, is a 2004 to 2006 883 head. Now, all 883 heads from 1986 to 2018 have 49 cc chambers. 99% of them that you're going to see have this chamber, which is a hemispherical chamber. You notice it's just a big bowl. This chamber works with basically a flat top three inch bore piston. So this piston is three inch bore. It's, this one is a late model one. It's got a small dome, but a lot of them are just straight flat tops. That dome doesn't really do anything. That piston is the same size as that chamber, three inches. And that's where the 8083 displacement comes from. Okay, so moving right along, this head is the 1200 Hemi head. And you'll notice the big, big difference between this head and this head is uh, the chamber is three and a half inches in diameter instead of three inches. Um, and furthermore, this 1200 chamber is quite a bit deeper than the 883 chamber. Okay, so this chamber is 49 cc's, this one's 67 cc's. And it, it was paired, all of them came from the factory with this piston, which is a flat top piston. And again, the, the piston is about the same diameter as the chamber. All right, and that's an important point. I'm gonna to get to why that's important here in just a minute. Okay, and then moving right along, starting in 2004, they went to this chamber. This chamber is what we call a bathtub chamber. And yeah, obviously it looks like a bathtub. The interesting thing about this chamber is, since it's not hemispherical, you, you end up with these flat edges on each side of the chamber. If you were to draw a circle there matching the board, you'd see that there's a flat area on each side of the chamber. This is the piston that they come with, which is a flat top, just like this one. They're both three and a half inches in diameter. This is just an improved version of this one. It's quite a bit lighter. But anyway, if you notice, when you put this piston over it, now you've got these flat areas here that come in close proximity to the piston. That's an important point because what that does is as the piston is passing through top dead center on its uh, you know, compression stroke, um, fuel is and air are mixed in there and some of it gets trapped in between the, the piston and this edge of the, of the uh, head. That's called the squish band because literally what you're doing is you're squishing the air and the fuel. And that squish band does some things for you. It, it um, shoots the fuel and air out of, of that squeezed area, causes turbulence, causes it to mix better. Well, what does that do for you? Well, mixing it better makes the, the burn more efficient. You don't get pockets of fuel that cause detonation and so forth. You can run quite a bit more cylinder pressure with this one. Now, you notice that this chamber is 62 cc's. At 62 cc's with a flat top, you get about 9.7 to 1 right in there, depending on you know, uh, variances between one and the next. At 67 cc's, you get 9 to 1. So this motor is 9 to 1, this motor is 9 to 1 from the factory, and this one's 9.7 to 1. How were they able to run the, the cylinder pressure up there? We were able to do it because they added a squish band. Hemi chambers really went out of style a very long time ago. The only Hemi chamber that Harley still offers, and probably one of the only ones left in the world, is this one. If you buy a new Sportster, it still comes with it, this Hemi chamber. It's probably the only motor left in the world that still has a Hemi chamber. Because long ago they figured out that a squish band uh, helps the efficiency of the motor. Okay, so what does all that have to do with the conversion, you're wondering? Well, when you um, take this, this head, which is designed for a three inch bore, and you stick a three and a half inch bore piston over it, it massively raises the compression. And this gets into a bunch of detail about how compression is calculated, but basically compression is the ratio of the volume when the piston's at bottom dead center, uh, or volume above the piston, to the volume uh, above the piston when it's at top dead center. Well, you can make the piston bigger, and this volume above the piston doesn't really change very much. But this volume changes a lot, because it changes by however much you change the displacement. Therefore, the compression ratio shoots way up. So increasing uh, displacement naturally increases compression ratio, even if um, you don't add a dome to the piston. So when you put this piston, this three and a half inch bore piston, underneath of this three inch chamber, that's only 49 cc's, you get 11 and a half, between 11 and a half and 11.8 to one compression. And that's generally too high for street use. So how do you solve that problem? 
Well, the old school way to do this, I mean, back when Evolution Sportsters first came out, this is how basically all the conversions were done, was to hog this chamber out with a die grinder. And you could even get a template when you bought a set of flat top pistons. You get a template that told you where to hog it out and make it look like this chamber, okay? That was the way it was done. The disadvantage to that is that you don't have a squish band when you do that. I mean, if I were able to, to run that piston with that chamber, I've got a three and a half inch piston over a three inch chamber and I would gain a quarter inch squish band all the way around, right? When I hog that out, I lose that squish band. So now I'm back to this chamber that has really poor turbulence, has to be run at low compression ratios because it has such poor turbulence. So along in the 90s, a different kind of piston came out and that's this piston here. And what this piston here does, if you look at it closely, you'll see that it's not a flat top. It's got a dish in the middle of it. So what this does is it lets you run the three and a half inch bore, in this case, three and nine sixteenths bore, because this is a 1250 piston, with the small 49 cc chamber and only have a 10 to one compression ratio. 10 to one is a pretty good all around number if you've got a squish band, because um, that'll work with the stock cams. It can also work with very mild performance cams. So that piston is a far, far better solution than using this piston and hogging out the chamber to look like this because you gain the squish band. That's why this, this edge of it is elevated like that so, that so that it'll create a squish band around the perimeter of the chamber. Very, very important. So if you're gonna do a conversion, don't hog out the chamber. We hate it seeing heads with that, with a, with a hogged out chamber. So it's, it's a good way to ruin a perfectly good 83 head. 83 heads can make a lot of power. You can do a lot of things with them. But if you hog it out to where all your material is gone, then, and then you can't do those things. So when somebody sends us a hogged out 83 head, we just, and they want a lot of power, we just tell them, look, it's not going to work. Um, one more note that I have on all this, and that is 30 degree pistons. If you read our website, you're going to see a lot about 30 degree pistons. We love them, we use them in all of our performance applications, and there are good reasons for it. But occasionally we have somebody who doesn't read the fine print on the website, and they order 30 degree pistons with their um, 1250 or 1275 kit, and they try to use them with a stock chamber. Let me show you what happens. This is, a, this is actually a, a 1275. 30 degree piston. You notice that it's got a tall angled dome here. That dome angle is 30 degrees from the horizontal. And then we've dished it in the middle to control the compression ratio. If you tr buy these pistons and you try to use them on a stock head, what happens? It runs right into the head, right? Because the, the chamber of the head hasn't been machined to match. So it's just going to smack into the head and your motor is going to lock up and probably damage some things. It could damage your connecting rods. Could, you know, obviously, it's going to hurt the head of the piston. So that's a very, very important point. We offer these for conversions as well, but they require head work. So don't buy this style piston if you're going to be uh, doing a conversion with stock heads. If you're going to be doing a conversion, a performance conversion, then of course we can modify your heads and we can make this piston work and it'll work far, far better than this other one. And, and that's going to kind of be the subject of the next version of this tech up. But for now, buy this piston, reverse dome conversion piston, works fine with your stock 883 heads, works fine with your stock cams, it'll work with your stock exhaust and air cleaner and everything else. The only thing that we really require you to change or ask you to change is the ignition system because this, this squish band speeds the burn so much that if you don't back out timing, then the motor runs hot, it loses power, you could even scuff the pistons. So with all of our uh, conversion packages, we recommend on a carbureted bike, we recommend an, an ignition. On an injected bike, we uh, of course um, provide a map or help you with a uh, map for your fuel injection system that has an appropriate timing curve. So that's it, and check back with us, and we will have another um, article, another video I mean, on how to uh, do a conversion and make a lot more power than just a basic conversion. Thanks.